what we're going to do with critical think thinking is try to be uh, based on evidence. We're going to try to, even though we cannot be purely objective, we're going to try to be evidence based, meaning that we're going to try to find the facts to find the I'm reluctant to say truth because truth is a complicated uh, notion philosophically and very pragmatically. Um, so I want to give you an example to show that very, very quickly um, things become a bit complicated to uh, question. So the, the kind of uh, easy question here would be, which do you prefer? A plastic bag at the supermarket, a compostable plastic bag, a thick solid plastic bag, or a cotton bag, or an organic cotton bag. We are given more and more this choice in many supermarkets, uh, and we all are welcome, welcoming that as a sign of uh, you know, engagement with sustainable development. We're taking that as a statement by the company that they're trying to reduce their carbon footprint. And ourselves, we're quite pleased and we're happy to get them. So for a long time, every time it would be offered, when they would say, do you want a plastic bag or a paper bag? I would say, I'd rather to have a paper bag because then I would put it in the recycling or I felt like if I have where to put it in the bin, it would burn more easily than uh, uh, using a plastic bag. Me thinking that without any research, without any fact, without any evidence is a sign of, and that's, it's not a bad word, but it's a sign of ideology. I was processing the information and making my decision based on assumption about the world and society. I was not doing it based on research facts and evidence. Ideology is not necessarily a bad thing. We don't research everything every day. Ideology is how we see the world and how we position ourselves in the world and try to negotiate with other people how we should live in this world. So me saying, oh, you have compostable bags. Oh, you have paper bags. Please give me one is without researching how it was produced, how it's compostable, uh, how it's recycled or not is me processing the entire information and situation based on an ideology that what I think is sustainable, what I think is sustainable development is right and is better. And one day I stumbled across a, a, a report that was produced by um, the Ministry of Environment uh, and Food in Denmark uh, a few years ago that did the actual research and the actual measure of life cycle assessment of grocery, grocery carrier bag. They can be questioned about the method, they can be questioned about uh, uh, the approach, and they are very clear. It's, it's a 150 page document with a lot of detail on methodology and the different, uh, uh, the different ways of calculation. It's just to give a baseline of uh, 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 being a bit evidence-based about this. Uh, if you want to be evidence-based about this topic, you need to take a look at the entire uh, production. So it's not just you taking this or that bag. It's also how is it used, how was it transported, how it was produced, and what is called EOL, which is the end of life uh, uh, process. So is it recycled? Is it burnt? Is it burnt? How is it burnt and to what extent? Let me reassure you, I'm not going into the entire detail of the document because it becomes very quickly, very technical. Um, just to show you, they consider a few hypotheses that, for example, you might use your plastic bag in the supermarket and you might reuse it as a waste bag in your bin at home. In that case, you have to account for the fact that you used a plastic bag, but also you didn't use a uh, um, a garbage bag, a plastic garbage bag for your bin. So they made a lot of assumptions and scenarios to really compare what would be comparable. Um, so they went through uh, three, and again, 
rest assured I'm not going to walk through through all the numbers on that uh, table, but basically they consider three scenarios. So that's end of life one, EOL two, EOL three, um, and they compared all the different types of bags and they looked at the uh, global warming, uh, uh, climate change impact, and also the possibility of considering other uh, categories. Uh, what I want to show you is just the yellow, uh, um, the yellow cells in that table on the left uh, half. So I'll just walk you quickly through it. If you see on the top left, it's LDPE average. So that's the typical classic plastic bag. And then they compare that average to other options. So when you look at the top left LDPE average in end of life three, EOL three, you see that it's zero because compared to itself, it's the same solution. I just want you to take a look at the comparison between using a plastic bag, a classic one, LDPE average, and using a paper bag, which is on the left side, the PAP, for paper, uh, the bottom third on the left side. Um, and what it shows you all the way to the right is that the equivalent of using a paper bag compared to using a plastic bag is 43. So that's the number on the last column in the line called PAP. What it means is that in order to have the same impact between a paper bag and a plastic bag, you have to reuse the paper bag 43 times. If you don't, so the, basically the idea is that the paper bag uh, impact on the planet is 43 times higher than a plastic bag, a normal classic plastic bag. So if you use and reuse the plastic bag less than 43 times than the plastic bag, you actually had more impact on the planet, more negative impact on the planet than if you had taken a plastic bag. If you look at the bottom where it says cut, the uh, second line starting from the bottom, COT, cut, compared to a plastic bag, a cotton bag, is 7,100 times more impactful on the environment because you have to produce cotton, you have to water the cotton, you have to harvest the cotton, you have to treat the cotton, etc. So when the when the when the cotton bag is in front of you, it has an impact that is 7,100 times higher than a plastic bag. So if you want to be less impactful on the environment, that cotton bag needs to be reused. 7,000 times, which means that even if you do your shopping every day at the supermarket, you would need to reuse that plastic bag for, uh, well, 20 years. So it's 20 years with the same cotton bag. I think you're like me and you have several cotton bags at your house that you don't bring every day to the supermarket and you have some cotton bags that you've forgotten. If you make that cotton bag organic, because, you know, organic is better, that's the third line from the bottom. Cotton org compared to a standard plastic bag is 20,000 times more impactful on the environment. All metrics considered, production, distribution, treatment, recycling, etc. So it means that if you look at the evidence, me saying, oh, you have you know, cotton bags or you have recycled plastic bags or is not that obvious. If you look at the my favorite option until now, which is the compostable uh, bag, which is BP, roughly in the middle on the left column, uh, a little on the bottom. So uh, the, the biodegradable uh, plastic bag is 42 times more impactful on the environment than the standard plastic bag. So from that, you can say, okay, if I want to have a low carbon footprint, maybe actually plastic bag is uh, better. That being said, 
if you have a plastic bag, it's likely to end up at some point in the ocean. And that metric doesn't necessarily take that into account. So yes, you have a lower carbon footprint, but maybe you're killing a poor turtle who's getting the plastic bag on their face and cannot breathe anymore. That's a different type of impact. What I want to show you is that evidence is sometimes very hard to produce. Uh, it's very boring to process. We're often very reluctant because when I found the result of that study, I was disappointed because I thought I was a good person by using the compostable bag and by going for the paper bag. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, I thought I was a good person, but actually I was wrong and I was not that uh, uh, gentle on the environment with all my nice principle. You know, we, 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 you know, we like to think of ourselves as good people. So when we discover that we are actually not always, or that we were wrong about it, that, that can be frustrating. Um, I strongly encourage you, if you're interested in this, to go see that study. Um, it's painful, it's boring, but evidence is often painful and boring. What is not boring is ideology and, you know, self-grandizing statement about yourself. I'm a good person because I recycle. I'm a good person because I use paper bags. There are other studies. Uh, if you come across other studies that have different conclusions or I'm interested in them, so, you know, don't hesitate to, to reach out. I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, to look at that. But that one is maybe the most complete, comprehensive study that I've uh, uh, seen so far. All of that just to show you that sometimes evidence goes against assumptions uh, that are rooted often in ideology and also in a way that we see ourselves. So it's not always easy to go for the evidence because it can challenge us in what we think and uh, how we like to think of ourselves. 